shall I sort of give like a crash course on like the process I I found to be quite successful over the years for MBA props? Yeah, let's let's hear it, man. Because I'm, I'm conscious to hear like how different your approach is to mine. Because when I'm looking for hockey props or American football props, I've, I'm yeah, I've got like a set. I've got like a set uh, process that I follow. I'd be interested to hear how you do it. Yeah, it's, I I kind of have the same process. I I've just added sort of more stages to it over time. Mm-hmm. That I that I found that have helped. To be honest, um, yeah. Early in the season, it's a bit more difficult. Like now that we've got a bit more data to work with, it's it's just well, it's been hitting. I'm on seven seven to three this week. I think it's going a lot. It, it's getting better pretty much every week now. Um, yeah. But at, at the start of the year, you obviously teams don't really know what they are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. There's a lot of change, like turnover from year to year, especially in the mm-hmm. NBA because star players can just move whenever they want. Um, yeah. So all you've really got to work with is like player averages for the last season, maybe two. Yeah. I wouldn't dig too far into it because I had, I had an absolute stinker then, by the way. Um, don't get too attached to like a stat from three years ago because it's probably not going to mean anything. Yeah. Um, Especially if they're on a different team, you know, or they've had development, they're playing a new role now. Exactly. Um, all those things to consider. So yeah, all you've really got to work with is sort of previous previous matchups against the team they're playing. Um, ideally, the players that will be guarding them. For example, mm-hmm. if one of your bigs is going up against a really soft center like Ennis Cantor, nothing personal, you're just not a good defender, then mm-hmm. you're probably going to lean towards their over immediately. Obviously, you can't really do much more digging than that and their previous matchups. If he's torched them in the past and it's a yeah. player that averages in the 20s over his career and the line is like 21, 22, you're probably going to consider playing it just because just based off of history and stuff like that but again another thing is go very very light at the start of the year because you don't have that data it gets a lot easier after a few weeks especially when you've had teams that already feel for the flow yeah and especially when you've had teams that have already met that year that's like a really good a really good indicator as well especially with um positional matchups and how certain players guard who and who guards who and yeah um, yeah. Then resources. So I, it's a very very basic website. It's not behind a paywall or anything. It's literally just team rankings. Is one of the main ones mm-hmm. I use. Um, yeah. It's got opponents point points in the paint. It's got three point percentage against. It's got every shooting stat you could name. Every defensive stat you could name. That you could, that you really need to sort of have success with this. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I sort of I, first thing I look at is players points in the paint that's the easiest one to read because that more often than not means dunk machines guys that live guys that get to the free throw line a lot as well then you can check yeah. free throw percentage and it, it's it's all tied in together like the easiest one to read is points in the paint so for example if this year like Oklahoma City are getting like Minnesota Timberwolves are getting killed in the paint. The Kings are getting killed in the paint. So anytime yeah. I've got like a big dunk machine like Clint Capella, for example, for the Hawks, if he's yeah. going up against the Kings, he's the first person I'm looking at just because I know he's going to get his chance at the rim because they don't have rim protection. People are just killing him up, killing him up front. So then where I'd go is I'd look to... Capella's averages over the last couple of games. I yeah. I like doing the last sort of ten to fifteen games. Um, mm. I like comparing matchups he's had to similar teams in terms of like where they're ranked defensively. So if there's a team similar to the Kings and he's already played them, I'll see how he played there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can check different websites to see how strong that team is at defending centers because obviously Clint Capella's a center. Yeah, you you can basically form your own what you think the line should be. So as a, as an example, like if you've got 
I, I've been absolutely hammering James Harden all season, as you know. Yes. Yeah. He's gone over 10.5 assists in 15 out of his 20 games with the Nets, as we're recording this, yeah? Yeah. So that implies 75% is... It's it's gone over the 10.5. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Now, it, like for a couple of weeks, the books didn't adjust that. They had it about just below evens. Yeah, like yeah 1. it's been 8, around the 1.8 mark for a while. So it's, yeah. it's been around there. So you're getting, just obviously take the juice into account because it's a really shallow market. You're yeah. getting 1.83 on something that should be, what, 1.25, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.3? 1.33, 1. 1. something like that. Yeah. So you're getting serious, serious value there. It's like it took them a couple of weeks to catch on the bookies. I think it took them a long time to adjust. Um, but now that I'm seeing lines that are up in the eleven and a halfs, and that in his twenty games with the Nets, that's only happened ten times, mm-hmm. and that's about even money. So they've basically got that price spot on. Yeah. So I'm not going to be touching eleven and a half. For love nor money, I, it's something I want no part of. Mm-hmm. You've already made no, your money on that line. Yeah, there's no value there. It's you don't want to go back to the well too many times, especially when they've obviously mm-hmm. been burned on it. Yeah. This better go in. I'm out of time. Oh, <laughs> clutch. Are they going to time you anyway? <laughs> no, better not. So yeah, like generally speaking, when you've got, you basically make your own price. You you want to determine. The odds of it happening, you want to compare that with the line. So you want to do this days in advance. Like I've done the next week of basketball now. I've got players circled for certain games just because obviously the season's like a couple of months in now. I know what players to look for against what teams based on what yeah. they're bad at defending and previous matchups and stuff. Yeah, it does you've already help. built your narratives. Yeah, I've already built the storylines I'm looking for, looking to attack. Um... So now all I've got to do is I've got the lines I want, the prices that I want. It's just waiting for as soon as the lines come out. If you're getting value based on what you have, it's you're playing it straight away. You've done all your work. You've done your research in advance. Obviously, if you're mm-hmm. doing stuff a week in advance and something massive changes, like I had Gilgis Alexander circled for tonight against the Atlanta Hawks because the Hawks are terrible at defending guards. But he dropped, I was hoping to get around 22 points, something like that, because he's been on a decent run, but he's gone under the radar. Yeah. He dropped 42 points the other night, so that line's like 24 now. I, no thanks. Just, 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 just destroyed your line, but you know, at least you were ready for it. You know, you, you know you're not going to make a bad bet either. Yeah, exactly. Like The value's gone. Like The, the line and mm. the price I wanted is long gone because he had a big night, and, big night, and it happens. It's, just don't be afraid to throw your research out because... That's why you do it, so you're not making a bad bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. Um, you you notice the difference, like almost immediately. I did. I did like the. I call it like the wrong way. Like the, you wait for the line to come out, and then you then you wait, then you see if you can find any bad lines. That is the wrong way to do it. You should already have your lines mapped. Yeah. That you can just go through and make and make them. I would mm-hmm. wait for the lines to come out for like almost a year. I did that. I was yeah. waiting for them to come out, and then I'd spend like hours sifting through. No, is this is this one bad? Is this one bad? Oh, it was two hours ago, but it took me that long to put my uh, information together. I've missed it. Yeah, you're you know you're you're more must missing the boat there because the earlier mm-hmm. you get on, the more value there could be in the pick, and then obviously when it gets hammered, yeah, like especially with preparation something, at the start is so key. Yeah, especially with a line that's like single digits. Like if it moves by like a point or two, then the like with the James Harden one I mentioned earlier, like the bet changes completely. It goes from seventy five yeah. percent win rate down to fifty. There's there's no yeah. value there at all. Just just leave it. You see it all the time with hockey players. Like you'll get um, like uh, player points. They'll be like player points zero point five uh, for all my games. You know, a, a, a point for everyone who doesn't know in hockey is uh, an assist or a, or a goal. Yeah. Um. So you you'll regularly get like just. Not nobodies, but players who you know don't see much action will be around the zero point five mark, around even, it's just because the 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 books don't know, so they've got no opinion. But if you're on top of that, if you were to bet that like eleven a.m. 
on the morning of the game, you get that price. But if you wait until you know Vegas wakes up around two or three o'clock, that price, if it's a good price, it's gone. So you've got yeah. to be ready to go like, in the morning, and it really helps to have those have those whether it's a spreadsheet in place or you know you just gone through the night before and you make notes. It's really useful. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of my process. Is just notes really. I've um, I do have some sheets. But it's it's very basic stuff. It's just stuff that you can find on sites and stuff anyway. It's just mm -hmm. it can be helpful to have it like all in one place. But it's personal preference. Obviously, it it takes a couple of years to fine tune your process. But yeah. But yeah, it's just knowing what to look for really, which comes with experience. Like it's it's you're not gonna have success straight away. It's a it's a long process. 